Hello everybody, it's Fern. Welcome back to another planty video. Thank you so, so much for joining me. So today I am actually doing a favorites video, which I'm really excited about because I haven't done one in so long. In fact, I feel like I haven't done a sit down video where I'm just showing you plants and talking about my plants, like individually. I guess I just did a plant tour. <laughs> But you know what I mean? This kind of like sit down style where we're talking more in depth about the plant. I haven't done that in so long. And part of the reason is because I stopped doing my monthly favorites. I figured that for 2024, I would do quarterly favorites. Um, so you're gonna be getting four dedicated favorites video this year. This is the first one. I can't wait to share my top. I think I'm gonna go with 11. I was gonna do top 10, but then I picked one more. So now I have 11 plants and I'm just gonna roll with that because 11 is my favorite number anyway. So I have 11 plants to show you. Um, plants that I've just been particularly appreciating over the past few months that have really been impressing me. And yes, I'm sure you've recently seen all of these plants because I just did my full in-depth plant tour, but I feel like there's even been some changes since then that I'm excited to show you. But yeah, I hope that you will enjoy this video. Okay, I feel like I have to start with this plant because I've just been talking about it so much lately, mostly on Instagram, um, because I've been obsessed with it since it's been blooming for me the past month or so. This started budding up like a couple of months ago in the winter still. And I was so surprised. I wasn't expecting it to bloom this spring. I haven't even had this for very long, but I guess I'm not surprised also in a way because it's just grown so quickly for me. Um, but I have, oh, I didn't even say what this was. <laughs> this is my Thai pink lipstick plant. And it not only has this beautiful dark green kind of succulent foliage. I love that the leaves are kind of um, round and smaller than some other types of lip lipstick plants. Like to me, it just has really beautiful and unique foliage. I love the way that it kind of cascades as well. A lot of the leaves down here are backwards because this is the side that's facing the window, but nonetheless, it's just such a pretty plant even when it's not in bloom. But when it is in bloom, oh my my, you guys, I am just so absolutely in love with these flowers. Look at those those pretty pink flowers they're so cute they're just the perfect baby pink color they're so cheerful i love them so much it's so fun just having this pop of pink hanging in the window look at them they're so cute so yeah that's really the main reason that i've been just so excited about this plant lately is because it's been in bloom for me which yeah surprised me and i just feel so lucky to be able to have these blooms in my home i know that this lipstick plant can be a little bit more tricky to find i don't think they're rare or anything but it's definitely um not one of the like commonly available types in the garden center at least not where i am this hangs in my south facing window it's a very very thirsty plant um i honestly we repotted this together I think in the fall and I honestly feel like it could use a repot again. It's constantly drying out. Um, I suspect it has a fairly ro robust root system in there. So I'm having to water this gal all the time. And one other note that I thought I would mention about this plant because I've had a couple of people comment and message um, saying that theirs loses leaves and mine does too. So I think that that might just be a thing with this plant. It's not like they yellow off and die. They just kind of get knocked off. I feel like it's just maybe a more delicate plant, kind of similar to the burrow's tail succulent. Like whenever I take this down to water it, I'll lose a few leaves, that kind of thing. Um, but you honestly can't tell because it's just like so lush and full. So I'm not worried about it, but I thought I would just mention that since I've had some messages of people saying that theirs lose, loses leaves. Other than that, I think that this is just such an easy going plant and easy to get bloom as bl to bloom as well, considering I did nothing special. So yeah, that is my first plant that I've just been loving over the past couple of months. Okay, so this next one that I'm about to show you actually lives in the Mills Millsbow Tall cabinet behind me. And I feel like I don't talk about it that much or show it that often, but it catches my eye every single time I look in this cabinet. I feel like it just adds so much and I just really appreciate it. I feel like it deserves more attention. And that is my Piper Crocatum. Here she is. I feel like whenever I show her, she's usually in the cabinet and she's usually like kind of pinned against the grid so that the trellis stays upright. So here's a closer look at her. She is so, so pretty and surprisingly easygoing. 
I was definitely intimidated by Piper before I had the experience of growing this one, but she honestly grows like a weed. She withstands my underwatering. She was actually completely wilted yesterday because this cabinet just dried out so much since it's been so sunny and hot here. But she perks back up every time and she just looks so stunning. She really just offers something a little bit different, like the, the pattern on the leaves, the color, the texture, the shape. Every trait of this plant is just a little bit unique and really different from everything else that I have in my cabinet. So I think that it's just such a great addition. As you can see, I have her trellis on this uh, clear acrylic Arca trellis and then just secured with dragonfly clips. Oh, something to note about this plant is that they get these like... I don't know what they are, like salt or mineral deposits or something. Can you see that on the back of the leaf? And I didn't know that before I got a piper. I literally thought that this had pests and I washed it off the first time, like when I first got it, because I had just never heard about that or seen that before, but it's completely normal. So <laughs> don't be alarmed if you get a piper and it has weird stuff on the back of the leaves. I just think that she's so different and so rewarding to grow. She's actually probably due for an up pot and I don't even know what I'm gonna do. Like if I'm just gonna keep winding her around this trellis or if I'm gonna find a different way to kind of grow her. If you have one, let me know how you grow yours or if you have any suggestions for where I should go with this because it's definitely, I mean, it's looped around this trellis a couple of times and it looks great, but it's continuing to grow. So I feel like I'm gonna need a different setup for it eventually. Okay, next we have a Hoya that I have just been obsessed with lately because it's been growing so well for me and it's actually starting to get a little bit sun stressed. I've actually noticed some sun stressing hap happening on a few of my Hoya in my south facing window just because it's been, yeah, it's been so sunny here. Like literally a week of sunshine and my Hoyas are like, what's going on? And they're starting to sun stress probably because they're normally used to the freaking clouds here for months and months. But anyways, this is a Hoya my Hoya Nicholsonia New Guinea goes, just look at her. Like, are you kidding me? This is like my dream Hoya. I honestly feel like this might be my second favorite Hoya after the Linearis. It's so hard to pick, but I, I feel like this is in my top three. Like it is just perfect. The minty leaves, and do you see the sun stressing coming in with the purple? Especially on the new leaves, look at that. Oh my, when I saw this, I just about croaked. Like, it is my dream to have that beautiful lavender sun stressing on this plant. I just think that it is so gorgeous. I love, I love everything about it. Like, I truly do. This is just, oh my goodness, it's even prettier than the last time I looked at it. What the heck? It's so gorgeous. Oh, I'm such a big fan. I'm such a big fan. I'm actually wanting to chop this so that I can root a cutting and then add it back in here because this needs to be up upsized soon it's drying out like i could water this every couple of days especially since it's in the south facing window so i've been meaning to take a cutting but it just keeps pushing out new leaves and then i don't want to cut it because there's baby leaves coming in like they're just constantly growing i'm gonna have to just go ahead and cut it one of these times but yeah i just love it so much i think that this is the prettiest hoya like they don't get much prettier than this in my humble opinion <laughs> Yeah, I love her so much and I just had to give you this fun little update of her gorgeous sun-stressed foliage. I am in love. Now hopefully she'll bloom for me one day. That'll just be the cherry on top. But this isn't even a Hoya, like I don't even care if it never blooms for me because I just, I love the foliage so much. Okay, I don't even know if this next one is gonna fit on the screen. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Okay, try to back it up here. So this is my Anthurium Crystal Meg Luxuriance Hybrid. This is the newest leaf. And when I tell you I am in shock about the size of this leaf, I, okay, I'm not, if y'all have been here for a while, then you know that Anthuriums are not my expertise, not even close. <laughs> I'm very beginner level with my Anthurium knowledge. And I never would have thought that I could grow an Anthurium to be this size. <laughs> like it's honestly, every day I would look at it expanding and just be like, what in the world is going on here? So I've been trying to be so, so on top of my watering with this because I didn't want anything to happen <laughs> to this leaf. It's actually still, really soft i don't think it's really expanding anymore i think it's just kind of hardening off now but still really soft and floppy but holy smokes can you guys believe like it's so pretty this one next to it that was the last leaf that came out this one look how dark and gorgeous it is 
oh my goodness i just love this Ethereum. it's also it also has an inflow right now which i'm not really doing anything with but um yeah i'm just so proud of this leaf i think it is the most just majestic incredible thing ever and it blows my mind i love the texture so so much i love my luxuriance hybrid so much it actually makes me kind of curious to find out if i would like just growing like the pure or like pure anthurium luxuriance um i feel so content with this though that i don't even know if i need that in my collection but um it does make me wonder what it would be like to grow that one just because i love the texture of this and everything so much i love the red petioles on this particular hybrid it's just everything about it is perfect um yeah i feel like this is an ethereum that i'm always going to want to keep in my collection i could kind of see myself like the way that i am with ethereums i could kind of see myself weeding down my collection of them eventually just kind of growing them out and then seeing which ones i truly love um but this is one that i feel i will always want to have because it's just i love everything about it and it's so easy going as well so yeah i'm just completely in awe with this new leaf um seems to be loving the rousseau light i think this is the first leaf that's grown since i've installed that light so yeah it's just gotten massive okay next is one of my newer plants and i usually don't include my new plants in my favorites because I don't know usually my favorites is featuring plants that have given me some new growth or some new bl blooms or have been really rewarding to grow or something like that and even though i've only had this plant for like i don't even know if it's been a month yet wait it's been just a month um i remember because it was the day olive had her dental procedure done that i got it um but i just have to talk about it because i am so obsessed with the variegation on this philodendron jose buono you guys i feel like i'm gonna be obsessed with this plant <laughs> like i can just i can feel the obsession coming on um as soon as i saw it pop out this new leaf and something about it i mean first of all it's like completely variegated which is insane and i don't know the the thing about the jose bono variegation is that it fades down to this kind of minty color so i think that perhaps it will hang on to like really highly variegated or entirely variegated leaves i don't know if you have one let me know does it hang on to those leaves because they do have some chlorophyll in them i it looks like but anyways this new leaf just not even the variegation though just the way it looks i think that how easily it emerged like i honestly just looked at this one day and this leaf was like boom just fully there not none of this like inchworm getting stuck philodendron business like it just seemed to just pop up looks completely healthy looks completely just like it's gonna be a gorgeous leaf so I'm getting easygoing vibes already from this plant, even though I underwatered it once or twice already, and it's just like a young plant. But yeah, oh my goodness, I cannot tell you just how excited I am to grow this out. Like the variegation on this particular specimen is just stunning. I love, love, love it. And I do also have a cutting. So I technically have two of these plants, which is so crazy because this was such a big wishlist plant for me, but I have two of them and they both are just stunning specimens. So I feel like this is going to be a really good year for growing out my Jose Bono plants. And I can't wait to see what's going to come of them. I want to get this on a pole as well. Yeah, I'm just, I'm really, really excited. This is one that I've just been loving lately. I'm always looking at it. Can't wait to see this new leaf unfurl yeah it's just just gorgeous okay next i have a little hoya to share with you i mean a little big hoya i suppose this is my hoya serpens which has these cutie little leaves that i love because they look like snake heads hence the name but despite the small leaves this has actually grown into a fairly large plant like look at this she is full she is lush and i'm just so so impressed with this okay it does have some crispiness here let's get that off <laughs> little crispy vine that's fine i've just been so impressed with how well this plant has grown for me especially just coming out of the winter i remember this really taking a hit for me last winter um but i mean obviously i've had a change in condition since i moved and it much prefers living in this place but it's just so gorgeous and i've just been noticing how full like this is becoming you know a pretty big little plant <laughs> i kind of am tempted to take this out of the cabinet but i also 
am scared to and I don't want to risk that because this has been in the cabinet I think that its whole life so it would probably probably be quite the shock for it to come out I also love the blooms on this Hoya it has like yellowy greeny blooms and they're so beautiful I can't even imagine if this ever bloomed for me I'd be so shocked it's never even come close to blooming if anybody has any tips for me please let me know I feel like I'm always asking that just trying to find out the secret sauce but I don't think that there is a secret sauce I think well, I don't know, <laughs> maybe there is, but I haven't had any luck with this even. It produces peduncles, but they don't ever like plump up or anything. Anyways, I love it. It's such a beautiful dark green too. Like I just love the darkness of it and it's been growing just so incredibly well for me. So yeah, what a little cutie. Also, it's been in this ceramic pot for like years. Um, this is from one of my old landlords. It's been in this pot for so long, but I don't know. It seems happy, so I'm just, I'm, I'm just leaving it in there for now. Sorry if there was just a million jump cuts. I had to speak around all of the barking that's currently occurring in my living room. Okay, let's do a begonia, just for funsies. So this is my begonia Fanny Moser, and I feel like in my uh, plant tour, the lighting just didn't really do this begonia justice. But oh my goodness, you guys, this just, it catches my eye every single time I'm in the bedroom. Like it's so dark, so shiny, and it honestly just looks perfect. Like there's really no flaws with this plant, which I don't know how that's even happening <laughs> because this thing gets underwatered. It lives in a cold room. I mean, it's kind of warming up now, but it has been living in a cold room over the winter and it literally just does not seem phased. So if you're looking for an easygoing, beautiful, dark begonia, Fanny Moser is for you, okay? Because yeah, look at her. Like, are you kidding me? That is so, so gorgeous. And mine is still relatively like small and young. So I think that these leaves are gonna get even bigger. And yeah, it's just gonna be so fun to grow. Hopefully it doesn't like get upset in the summertime. Maybe it prefers the cool weather. I'm not really sure. But yeah, she's just gorgeous and she's been so, so easy. I just, I can't even, I can't even tell you. And yeah, I just, I had to feature her and just give you a better look and sing her praises again because she just brings me so, so much joy. I just have a little acrylic trellis in here, which actually has been working really well for my begonias. I've been using it for a few of my begonias and yeah, it's great. I just kind of clip them on and they grow upwards. And then a clear pot here. She seems very happy with the setup. Okay, maybe now is the time for me to talk about this gal beside me here. <laughs> Again, this is a plant that's not, not really gonna fully fit on the screen. Um, she's pretty big now. She's climbing, honestly, almost at the top of her moss pole extension. <laughs> Again, I feel like I'm always extending this plant. This is my Monstera Escaletto, one of my current just favorites plants out of my whole collection to grow because of how rewarding it's been and how I guess like seemingly easy it's been to get these big leaves this can get a lot bigger than this as well like mine is actually still relatively small in comparison to, to just how mature and how large they can get I have a new leaf right here but it's still hardening off it's very fresh but look at just how beautiful that is Oh, I just love it. It's something about them. Like, I just, I love the fenestrations. They look so delicate and I don't know. I just love them so much. Like they really, really do something for me in every stage of the leaf as well. Like even when they're still furled up, I just love, I don't know. It's just something about this plant. The whole process of getting the new leaves and everything is so rewarding to me. And I feel like it's going to only get more exciting with the bigger and more matured this plant gets. This is climbing a Rousseau pole. I have it secured to a Rousseau mount and, um, and it grows like a weed. I also use the BIOS fertilizer. I use my BIOS on my most of my larger plants and also just any plants that I feel like need the extra help. And this is one that I've been using the BIOS on it pretty consistently and it's done really well for me. I'm excited about what the next month or two is gonna bring for this plant because I'm gonna be chopping it once it gets to the top of this pole um, because I just want to take a couple of cuttings and then uh, maybe, yeah, I'll take one or two cuttings, root them and then pot them back in and just continue. Or should I do a chop and prop and then take cuttings from the bottom? I'm getting ideas now. 
or not a chop and prop, a chop and extend. Actually, that's probably a better option. I think I'll do a chop and extend and then take a cutting from the bottom half, root that, and then eventually add it back in with the top portion. That makes way more sense. I'm definitely gonna do it that way. Um, so yeah, really excited about that. I'll probably be sharing that process with you guys. But yeah, this plant has just been my baby over the past year. So yeah, really proud of how far it's come. All right, we're gonna do another Hoya. I did have a fair amount of Hoya in this video, but I mean, y'all know I'm just, I'm, oh my gosh, you can see this ugly paint on my wall. Sorry. <laughs> The previous owner left these walls in such a state. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm obsessed with Hoya right now, so I'm sorry. But this is my Hoya Bella. And I feel like this plant is doing well for like the first time ever <laughs> since owning it. So I just have to take this opportunity to appreciate it and to show it off and to talk about it. So this pot has both um, Hoya Bella outer variegated, which you'll see. Oh my gosh, it's kind of hard to show, honestly which you'll see, oh my gosh, I don't wanna like break the leaves off. Let me try to hold this vine up. This is the outer variegated. Okay, you can only see half of it because it's like twisted. Maybe you can see better on this vine. Outer variegated Hoya Bella. And then we also have in here, wait a second, oh, it scared me. I thought I broke off a peduncle. We also have the inner variegated in here. Oh, look at how gorgeous that is. I love the inner variegated. Ah, oh, I think that that is just so, so gorgeous. Now, I really don't have that much inner variegated in here. Like, it's definitely the outer variegated that grows faster and has really taken off for me. But what I do have on one of the inner variegated vines, I guess, is this juicy peduncle. Is it gonna focus? Do you see that? Oh my goodness, I've been checking on this thing daily. I saw this plant peduncling up for me, but I really didn't know if they were actually gonna come to fruition, if any blooms were gonna come of it, but they're actually, it's actually happening, you guys. I think it's happening. This is thirsty, I need to water it after I'm done filming. There's tons of peduncles on here, actually, on the inner and outer variegated portions. Um, so that's something that I've just been really excited about with this plant is the fact that I might actually get some blooms or it looks promising that I'm going to get some blooms. Um, and it's just growing for me. It's happy. It looks a little chaotic, <laughs> but I love it anyways. And yeah, it's just finally thriving for me. So yeah, I love it so much and I can't wait for it to bloom for me. I just think that that's so fun. Oh, wow. Look at how pretty this one leaf is on the inner variegated, or sorry, the outer variegated. Look at that. Oh my goodness, if they all looked like that, I would love the outer variegated. That's so gorgeous. Okay, next I have a cutie little philodendron. This is my philodendron Florida ghost. One of the three that I currently have in my collection. I think I'm gonna get rid of one of them. I'm gonna keep my big kind of trailing one and this one because this one is on a moss pole. I guess I don't need to take it out of the pot. It's in this like cutie little pot. My Anthurium politiflorum used to be in this pot and it looks so good in there, um, but I had to up pot my Anthurium politiflorum recently, um, which I think I posted as a short on here. So you may have seen that. Uh, and then I ended up giving the fruit pot to my Florida ghost here. I've been obsessed with this one in particular. This came from Green Spaces in my import that I got in December. Um, and I love it because look how white those leaves are. <laughs> like, it's just looking so, so gorgeous. Like these are perfect ghosty leaves. They're literally gorgeous. I cannot stop just looking at this plant. It is so, so stunning. I love how we have some of the older green leaves and then we have some that are in the kind of like minty stage like this one. If you're not familiar with uh, Philodendron Florida Ghost, the whole idea is that the new leaves come out ghosty, like this white color. They can range from like pretty much stark white. Like this is a very white specimen, I would say, like probably as white as they come really. So they can range from white to like a cream to even like a lime green. If it's not getting a lot of light, sometimes it can just be like regular green. Um, and then when you provide more light, the emergence become lighter. So yeah, they can be quite diverse. Um, 
just in the way that they present depending on the genetics of the plant and also the growing conditions and I'm just so happy with this one um, I feel like it has great genetics it's just gorgeous stunning so hardy as well like this was in the mail for 20 days and then I acclimated it just to like regular room conditions in winter time like no artificial light nothing and it has not missed a beat like it's just grown so well for me so I am in love with it and it actually has two plants in here um so this is another this is like the newest leaf on the smaller one in here and look at how cute that is it's so little so yeah this currently lives on my south facing window I think that that might get a little bit too much for it uh, as we get closer to the spring and summer here so I'm, I might move it or yeah probably pull it back from the window a little bit but right now it is thriving and it's actually rooted into the moss pole I just noticed which is so so cool I just can't wait to see this climb I would love to get some more mature leaves can you imagine if the leaves were like big and mature and then this color like that would be just mind-blowing <laughs> so I'm really excited about the future of this plant okay last but not least I have another Hoya for you I'm so sorry if you don't like Hoya I just but how could you not like these ones that I'm showing okay like they're just they're perfect um, so yes, this is my Hoya Croniana Super Silver, and I just, I cannot emphasize how fun and rewarding this plant is to grow because it's so hardy, so easygoing, um, blooms prolifically, like I have, I don't know if you can see, but I have multiple, um, like peduncles that are about to bloom for me on here. I did just have some flowers right there which just ended their cycle there's a few that are open over here but they're like at the end of their cycle as well um but she's constantly blooming uh, the foliage is stunning like of all i mean there's tons of croniana or lacun lacunosa whatever there's i don't know what like I've heard people say that croniana isn't even a thing, like there's just lacunosa. I don't know enough about Hoya or about that lore to really comment. I call this croniana because that's what I got it as, but um, I got it in a trade, but yeah, it was called croniana, so you know, whatever. Um, I'm not gonna get hung up on the IDs, but it's just so gorgeous. I love the mintiness. Like, oh, I, I just, I'm silver Hoya obsessed, and I know that that's like, everybody's silver hoya obsessed right now um they're not really anything like that unique anymore um like they've just they've been super popular and a really big thing for quite a while now but i don't even care i've always loved silver foliage so the fact that silver hoya are having such a moment just makes me so happy like i'm like good amazing bring it on give me more silver hoya i just love them one that's actually on my wish list right now is the hoya Coriaceae silver, I believe. That one is just, oh my goodness, it is so, so stunning. If I could ever get my hands on that, I would be stoked. But this one is just such, like, it grows so quickly, so easy to grow, blooms so easily. I highly, highly recommend this one if you're looking for a Hoya and if you like silver foliage. This is very much just like me trying to cover the <laughs> wall. This is very much uh, beginner friendly and I, I just honestly don't think that you'll be disappointed. It's just, it's stunning and it's an easy plant. Okay y'all, so that is it for my top 11 favorites for the first quarter of the year. I hope that you enjoyed and I hope that this video satisfies those of you who were bummed out that I'm not doing favorite videos every month. Um, I just, yeah, it just became, it just felt a little bit repetitive. So I think it's more fun to do it quarterly and do like a top 11. Um, so I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm liking this. I'm vibing with this. I'm really looking forward to the next one, which is gonna be, I guess in June, because we're gonna be into the growing season then, and I just feel like there's gonna be some really exciting things to share. Um, I mean, of course, I'm gonna be updating y'all on lots of exciting things between now and then, but um, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you liked this little favorites moment. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.